Hi y'all, welcome to my channel and in today's video I'm going to be sharing with you our first grade homeschool curriculum picks for the 21-22 school year. So stay tuned! Okay, so if you are new, welcome to my channel, Pursuing Peace. My name is Dina and I am a homeschooling mama of five kiddos, seven and under. And on this channel, I share my passions for Christ, for homeschooling and for encouraging mamas in their faith and in this amazing, even though it's crazy and it's chaotic and you're trying to put out five fires all at one time, it's still a beautiful season of motherhood. So if you'd like to join me on this journey, then click the subscribe button down below. And don't forget to click the little bell icon so you get notified whenever new videos pop up. You can also follow me over on Instagram if you'd like to get an inside glimpse on what goes on around here on a daily basis. All right, you guys, so curriculum. This is part three of my curriculum picks video. I do have also a um, second grade curriculum video and then a kindergarten curriculum video. So this is my first grader, and then I'm gonna jump over to preschool later too. And I just did it out of order like that because of just the different items that have not come in yet and different things like that that I wanted to show you guys. So today is for my first grader, and if you have been around my channel um, for the last year or so you know that my boy that is going into first grade we've kind of had some bumps along the way with his reading and his just um, you know his level where his reading level where he was at and um, using the good and the beautiful going through that and just different things like that and I have videos of our journey from like last year the beginning of last year the, the beginning of two years ago <laughs> when he very first started the level K and then you know just reviews on that throughout the last couple of years we stuck with the good and the beautiful and I am so happy that we did and we just took it so slow and we did kindergarten for two years and you guys I am so happy that we did that his reading now is just it blows my mind I do feel with their curriculum that I can take my time Time. their levels are a little bit more advanced so I wasn't scared that I, he was falling behind or anything like that I think that it was just perfect timing and I'll tell you a little bit more about that in just a bit but something else that really helped him with his reading was an app called reading eggs and today I am partnering with reading eggs to show you um, what they are all about you know I have I love reading eggs and I have sung their praises before and basically reading eggs is an app where it helps teach your child to read but not only that there's another component of reading eggs called math seeds and that has been amazing and it's the same idea where reading eggs teaches them how to read math seeds teaches them about math and it's just the perfect app that I can tell them when they have tablet time I can let them know go do your reading eggs and I know whatever they are doing on reading eggs they are learning something and it's gonna be something that is important to their education what's fun about reading eggs is it has so many different things also there are different like science videos that they watch I have caught them trying to do different science experiments <laughs> from the app and I can tell you I wasn't laughing at the time <laughs> But now I can think back and laugh on it. Um, <laughs> but it honestly was kind of neat to see them trying new things on their own and, and getting inspiration from this app. And you guys, I really do think that Reading Eggs has helped my boy just learn how to read. Um, it has been a wonderful supplement to the good and the beautiful. And so I highly recommend it. I'm going to leave a link down below in my description box for a month free of Reading Eggs so you can check it out for yourself it works on a desktop or a tablet or a phone and so you can make it work for you however your homeschool runs you can make it work for you even if you're not a homeschooler this is an excellent app you guys this is so so good something else that I love about reading eggs is that it it updates you on your child's progress and there are different activity sheets and say you're you don't want your child to be on the screen 
for very long. Well, you can go and print out these activity sheets that go along with um, your child's grade level and um, with the app games and different things like that. And you can um, print them out and have your child do, do that for a bit. And so overall, Reading Eggs has just been wonderful, not only for my first grader, but all the way from my preschooler all the way up to my second grader. And I know that it can go beyond that too. So again, I highly recommend it. Check out that link down below so you can get your free trial of reading eggs. <laughs> Okay, you guys, so like I was saying before, we did two years of kindergarten and it was such a blessing to do two years. And I'm, I'm telling you guys, like, God knows what he's doing. <laughs> I know that seems kind of, you know, like obvious, <laughs> but we need that reminder every once in a while because we forget, we as humans, we have finite minds and we just forget and we get worried and fear starts to creep in. And that's where I was a year ago where I was like, I don't know if I wanna do two years of kindergarten. What if he gets behind, you know? What if he legitimately gets behind or, you know, something happens and I kept telling myself, it's okay, it's okay. My husband kept saying, it's okay, it's okay. But you know, as mamas, we have this little twinge of fear inside of us, you know? And we don't want our child to be left behind. So after praying about it and talking with people about it, we just decided to keep him in kindergarten for another year. Um, a lot of it had to do with the fact that he would still be in his level K book. We felt like he was very logical, logically minded. <laughs> And he would just not understand that, you know, if we had a kindergarten graduation, because we like to do that at the end of the kindergarten year, if we had one of those for him, but then he was still working on his level K book, it would, it would, I feel like it would not make sense to him in his brain. So that was one of the big reasons we did it. And you guys, I am so glad we did because... <sighs> Like I said before, his reading is amazing now and he is confidently going into the first grade. Not only that, but uh, I praise God for little glimpses of his providence in everything. And I will tell you just a quick story about that and how I just saw that this year. So in classical conversations this last year, we were learning about American history and my boy fell in love with the presidents, like every single president. He don't care who it was. <laughs> in love with every single president but his very favorite president was abraham lincoln and he just like loved everything about abraham lincoln got all of the little books that we could find you know and um learned everything about him and loved his big hat you know and his beard and how tall he was and he just um that was just his favorite he even dressed up as abraham lincoln for halloween last year and he just had such a fun time with that and so just this very last summer, a couple of months ago, we were able to go with some of our CC families. We were able to go to Washington DC as like an epic end of the year field trip. And because we hadn't had his kindergarten graduation yet, we were able to take his kindergarten pictures with his little cap and gown at Lincoln Memorial. And you guys, this was amazing. And he will have these pictures and these memories for the rest of his life. And it was just so wonderful to be able to share that experience with him and to be able to be somewhere like that. And it was so neat because it was at the, it was the end of the year. So like everybody was taking graduation pictures. You had like high school seniors taking graduation pictures and you had college seniors taking graduation pictures. And then you have my little boy. <laughs> he was the only one the little tiny little thing with his cap and gown and everybody was saying hey congratulations congratulations and it was just just so neat and both sets of grandparents were able to be there with him and it was just an amazing time and we would not have been able to have that had we just kind of pushed him along um last year and so it was just a wonderful little you know confirmation from the lord just saying you are right where you need to be. So it was just beautiful and I wanted to share that with you guys. And so he is confidently going into the first grade. He is so excited to go into the first grade. He cannot wait to get into his first grade books. And I'm sure you are really excited to see these first grade books. So 
<laughs> Without any further ado, I am going to let you know what we have. The very first thing that I want to share with you is the math. We are doing math level one from the good and the beautiful and it's their new simply good and beautiful math now i don't have it in my hands quite yet but i will be sure to let you know when that comes out and i will probably do a video on um just kind of an unboxing and hopefully a do a lesson with us i know a lot of you guys liked that when we did it with uh, my kindergartner so i want to do that for you just so you can get a good idea of what exactly it is and how it all works. And like I have said in my previous videos, we loved their math from before. We were able to do the old math from the good and the beautiful um, within like 20 minutes. He would just do it so fast. Math is something that he understands. He is good at it. But I am so excited about this new math, you guys. The kindergarten math is amazing. And so I cannot wait to see level one and level two. <sighs> So I am just so excited to show it to you guys and to get it myself and have him see it. Oh, he's going to be so excited. So yes, math for our first grader, we are going to do level one from Simply Good and Beautiful Math. Okay, now I'm going to turn the camera around and I'm going to show you what else we have for my first grader. All right, you guys, so this is it. Um, we use the Latchmate bins for um, storage for all of our curriculum. Each one of my kids has um, their own latchmate bin and I just got this little chalkboard uh, label from Target and put their names on it. And so these are um, from Michaels and they're usually on sale. You can always find a coupon too if they are like not on sale. So. <laughs> So I love these because they have these little storage items on the top here. Um, and these little guys, I got from the Dollar Tree. They're over in the food section. They're little food containers. And they come with like eight in a pack or something like that. There are these round ones. And then they also have some like rectangle, rectangular ones. Um, and I just keep little manipulatives. So he likes these beans. We've always had these beans since he was like in level K primer. I think these actual beans. <laughs> it's so, um, so we keep that, these buttons, there used to be more, they got lost along the way. <laughs> but we use these for just like, we cover up words when he's finished reading them or just different things like that. And same thing with the beans. And then here we've got some money here and then a little die as you can see in there. Um, and sometimes their math would call for money. And so I had this here. I, I'm not sure if I'm going to need that anymore. So we'll see. Um, and then we've got a dry erase marker and I usually have a pom pom and you get new ones, um, for an eraser. And this, you guys, I actually have this in here because I would use it to like cover up sections. Say he had like a whole list of words you know and usually the good and the beautiful doesn't just give you a list they're like in little horses or they're like in little pictures or something like that but sometimes my boy was having such a hard time that um it was just a lot it just looked like a lot so i would just put this here um you know over the words and then we'd slowly kind of push it down and push it down push it down until he was done reading so at least visually it wasn't too overwhelming for him and so i've had this it, it originally was from i don't even remember i used it in his preschool handwriting i think we used handwriting without tears and i i think i had it there from before but then i learned that i can use it for that so now i just keep it in here just in case um you know i need to cover something up for him and then over here we have this little index card holder and this holds all of his phonics cards from the good and the beautiful. So they have little tabs called learning, not learned, and mastered. And right now they're in the all the, well actually they're on the, in the wrong tab. But <laughs> they're supposed to be in not learned. Because <laughs> ha he has not learned any of these yet. And then I will pull up like maybe five or ten of them. Put them in the learning section over here. Um, and then once he's mastered them, I just stick them in the back right over here. So it's a super easy system and these fit really well in this index card holder. Um, and the index card holder fits really well here. These are just extra cards for him, um, that we, I don't think we're going to need this, this year, but I just like to keep them all together. And then back here, we just have a ruler for him too. So that's pretty much all that we need. Um, 
if you have the older math manipulatives from the good and the beautiful they also fit in here along with all of this other stuff and i have different videos showing how i used to fit all of it in here but um since they streamlined the manipulatives then um, we don't need as much space all right so all of this curriculum fits in here i'm going to pull it out Okay, the first thing we have here is handwriting, and he is going to be doing level one from the good and the beautiful for handwriting. He has actually started this one already, you guys. <laughs> um, he finished his level K. I mean, like I said, we did level K for two years. So he finished his level K a while ago, and so he is starting to um, do this one. And I think, yeah, he might be almost done with this one. Oh, look, he's getting so good. And I know this, this kind of looks like, I don't know what it looks like to you guys, but, <laughs> oh, but he's just, he's my boy. He's my boy. I love all of his little drawings. So look, he copied a tree. He copied the flowers. And I look, I know it looks a little bit messy, but he's just doing so well. Okay, here it is. He is on page 59. So we've got a few more pages in here. I love the handwriting from the good and the beautiful every time. And look, they have such good um, copy work in here. I will stand with God. I mean, come on. <laughs> um, I can work hard. And then they always have um, little activities for them down at the bottom. Um, color the shields over here is draw juice or water in the jars. Um, and they're just so good. Here's a maze. I can give love. I am blessed. The river runs fast. God made the moon. Love others. Yes, please. Share a smile. This is so good. This is so good. We also do some other copy work from our classical conversations um, stuff. And so we don't do this absolutely every day. Um, but he loves this. He loves, we only, we only do a page a day. Um, and he usually does a page and it takes him a while because he's, you know, trying to color. He likes the rainbow. So he, he colors things in rainbow, as you can tell here in rainbow colors, <laughs> see the books. Oh, so good. So good. Um, so yes, yeah, so he's doing level one from the good and the beautiful for handwriting. Um, and if he finishes this, I have level two here waiting for him. And level two is not where they start cursive. Level three is where they start cursive. But level two, you can see already here that the lines are starting to get a little bit smaller. Um, a little bit more copy work starting right at the beginning. Copying. So yeah, copying the houses and the trees, oh, learning how to draw a boat. That's so fun. That's so fun, step-by-step -step drawing. And I love these kind of prompts. They do um, color the bird and then draw a scene by adding clouds, water, etc. I love those type of things. So yeah, guys, so this is level two from The Good and the Beautiful. You do not need to have um, your levels for handwriting correspond with your levels for um, language arts it just it depends on your child and I know my second grader is in level four of handwriting so it really really just depends on um, your child how much they love handwriting how much they do not like handwriting <laughs> so it just really depends so I just have level two here for him for this year just in case he finishes level one okay the next thing we have here is the good and the beautiful level one course book and all of these language arts course books are pretty much laid out the same I have put little tabs in here that way it's easy for me to get to where I need to go so those are the phonics cards and I love these these little simple rewards that the good and the beautiful does um, when he masters cards 1 through 56 he can color the squirrel 57 through 90 the dog and 90 through 124 the horse so he can just color these it's just so nice and then they have their sight word ladders and the way this works is they need to be able to say it three times so three days straight without hesitation um, and then they've got it mastered 
And then once they master it, they can pick which animal they want to color. Um, and so the good and the beautiful, as far as language arts goes, they, it seems like at least up to level two, um, it seems like it has kind of been built the same. So like I said before, my girl, my second grader, she usually can read all of these words before we even get to the book that she is on just because she is such a good reader. But my boy will probably have some trouble with some of these and that is completely okay because they're not expected to know all of this stuff before they get to the book. That's why we are doing this book. So it's completely okay. So I'm looking forward to him learning about all of these things. So unit one overview, these are all the spelling words. Here are the supplies that you're gonna need. Major phonics and grammar principles taught. Writing and other principles taught. taught. So writing is covered by this. Um, books used. Um, in the level reader and I'll show you the level one reader here in just a bit and I'd like to show this too So this is not just a Reading curriculum. It covers phonics reading spelling writing literature grammar and punctuation and art appreciation the good and the beautiful is um, Charlotte Mason inspired so it has a lot of dictation a lot of narration um, a lot of writing a lot of um, art appreciation but I love it. It's a good mix of like traditional and Charlotte Mason. It's got a lot of structure, which I am very thankful for because then I know what to do. <laughs> but then it also is just very beautifully done and very fun. Like, I don't know how else to describe it. It's just a lot of fun. It doesn't feel like, look at it. It doesn't feel like a workbook. It feels like a fun little friend. <laughs> Oh, I remember all of this. Oh, this is a fun one. I actually have a video of my first grader at the time, my oldest, doing this. It's, they paint it with um, uh, Q-tips. Oh, it's so good. So this is kind of what I was talking about before where the, he's got like a lot of words. And then he also has to read these down here. I'll take that um, paper towel and I'll just cover like this whole section up right here. So he's only got four words to read. And then I'll push it down and then I'll push it down and keep going until he's done. And then he's done and he doesn't, he didn't feel completely overwhelmed. And then he's like, whoa, mama, I just read all of that. And I'm like, yep, you sure did. All on your own, some more painting. So they're definitely gonna need watercolors. And they tell you that at the um, beginning of the unit back over there. So this is just, this is just fun, you guys. And here, um, I had actually someone ask me about letter tiles and it doesn't come as a, like a manipulative, with the course, but they do have these in here where you cut them out and then you can kind of manipulate them and make different words. And so it does that in level K and it does it here. I'm not sure in level two yet because we haven't gotten too far into level two quite yet. Um, but yeah, this is so great. And ugh, you guys, this is just such a fun book. I just love, we loved level one from the good and the beautiful. Look at all of that art. Oh, this was one of our favorites where they actually write a letter and this is an envelope and I actually made copies of this because I knew that she was going to want to do it more than once. And so you just create kind of like a little postcard and it shows you how to do all of that. Mommy. And it gives you examples there. So yeah, so guys, these is just so good. So beautiful. So unit three, and I believe there's like five units in here. Um, it goes all the way up to lesson, these are just review practices, lesson 119, this is unit 5 review and assessment. So they have assessments, um, they're not tests, they are just assessments to see where your child is at. Um, so one of the first things that they have you do, if not the very first thing, is they have your, you have your child read this poem here and then this passage here and time them and just see how long it takes for them to read it and how many mistakes they have. So then you just come over here, you put the date, you do how, uh, the time, how long it took them, and then right here you put down how many mistakes they did. And 
Again, when they first get this book, they are not expected to do very much at all. I usually help them a lot um, when we first read this. But what's wonderful about this, you guys, I love it so much. What's wonderful is that they can actually physically see their progress throughout the year. So they have you do it at the beginning, right in the middle of the year, and then at the end of the book. And you can see just how their time got faster. You can see how many words they're not missing anymore. And not only can you see it, but they can see it too. And oh, they just love that so much. I know that sometimes these assessments can be a little bit scary, but they're really not. If you take your time and just tell them gently, like, it's okay, it's not a big deal. We're just gonna read it and we're gonna see how your practice makes progress. And they have just really loved these, you guys. They've got this, they've got this other reading assessment here, and then they practice these charts throughout the um, course book and it'll let you know when to do that. So they just practice all of these charts. And then they do incorporate spelling into here, but if you like this more a, a traditional approach to spelling where you have a list of words, then you can do that too. So you've got your words, you can, then you can check mark if they've mastered it or if they need to review it a little bit. And then they have this little reward here too. Um, whenever they finish this chart, they can color the kitty cat. Whenever they finish this chart, they can color the fox. We haven't used these. I'm not sure if we're going to this year or not, um, but I know that like a lot of my friends like this more traditional approach and that's okay. And I'm glad that the good and the beautiful gives them, um, gives us that option. Um, and then over here, you've got poetry memorization. Now this is additional poetry memorization. Poetry memorization has been incorporated into the course, but if you like to work on it a little bit more, then you can have this also where um, they can say it to recite the poem to three people. So you do it one, two, three, and then they can color this little picture over here on the side. And so, yeah. And then here are the different options for the different um, poems that they can memorize. And that's it, you guys. That's it. Oh, I did put a tab back over here too so I could get to the assessments quickly because you do go back to the assessments a good amount in the course book. So yep, this is the level one course book. What also comes with it are those flashcards that I showed you earlier, but then also the level one reader. And this has the little books. If you noticed in the book, it said, um, you know, what, what books from the level one reader you're gonna read in this unit. So that's what this is. So it's all um, bound in one book, but they've got little books within the one book as you can see here. here. So the book will say something like, um, have your child read School at the Zoo. And so then your child will go and she, they will read with you. Um, and they'll read this whole little story, which is great. I love that they're little stories now and not just, you know, like, you know, a page or two or so. That's a pretty long story, but remember, this is the end of the book. <laughs> oh, and this is a poem um, that's not with the story. So let's look at the very first story, because that kind of scared me a little bit. <laughs> okay, Pets is the very first story. And see, yeah, that's, <laughs> this is definitely feels a little bit more doable <laughs> for where my boy is at right now. So yeah, so this is the very first story here that he would read and see that's definitely less, way less pages than what that other one was. A hunt with dad. Oh, I just love these. <laughs> oh, he's gonna love these. We have woods in our backyard. Not really woods, it's just kind of a clump of trees. <laughs> but it's woods for us. <laughs> and he loves going back into the woods. So he's gonna love these stories. So good, that's a level one reader. And then also to go along with um, his language arts, I have created a little journal. Um, and this is recommended from The Good and the Beautiful, but I made this. <laughs> um, and it's just a way to keep it all together. These are happy discs or happy planner discs because they do a lot of writing, a lot of spelling, dictation, artwork. I just wanted to have a place where I can keep it all together. The Good and the Beautiful does recommend that you get some sort of like student journal, so you don't have to do anything like this. You could just go get a um, spiral bound notebook and that will be just fine. <laughs> 
Um, but I just wanted something a little bit more, I don't know. I love that you can pull the pages out too. I think that was my big thing. But all you have to do is print it out and cut it up and I laminated it. Um, and then, you know, I have the hole punch, the classic Happy Planner hole punch and then the discs. So it's pretty easy to make. And then on this side here, it says today I'm thankful for, and he wrote mom, and we write these whenever we do write them. We write it with um, wet erase marker so that way it doesn't come off very easily. And then this I actually got on Etsy. I will leave the link down below. Unfortunately, I can't share this with you guys because I bought it, but I will definitely leave the link down below. And it just shows little um, solar system facts, so about the different planets. And when I printed it out, I just made sure I cut it out as a tab. So I used like a Happy Planner tab um, that I have for my other Happy Planner and I just used it as a template and cut it out like this. And here this first tab, we have just um, like kindergarten notebook paper. I'm not sure what it's called, these lined notebook papers because he's still learning how to form his words. So we have that. So we use this for like spelling or dictation or anything like that. Um, I just usually will write up here like the, the lesson and the date and what we're doing, either spelling or dictation, and then that way I have a record of it. And I love at the end of the year, I can just pull all of these out and then I have kind of a mini portfolio of, of what he did. The next tab here is Phases of the Moon. So we have this one, it's so, these are so cute. Um, and here we've got like, I'm not sure, show and tell paper I think is what it is. And I'll leave all these paper links down below too. There's only one link and then it has all of this paper in there. Like I said before, The Good and the Beautiful does writing. So he'll write stories and then he'll illustrate the stories here. Um, they don't ask you to illustrate them, but my kids really like to illustrate their stories. <laughs> so we have this paper here. And then the next tab this is our solar system, and I just printed these out on cardstock, you guys, and again, used a template to do this tab. Um, and this is art paper. So this is from an actual art um, book, pad, whatever you want to call it, and then I cut it down to size, and I hole punched it. And then the back cover here, it says, in the beginning, God. <laughs> And the back cover here, this says, I love you to Pluto and back. This was just something that we said um, last year. He said this a lot to me. And so it was just something that I wanted to kind of keep. So now he says like, he says, I love you to Pluto and back, but he says the sun. And then he says like some distant star, you know, <laughs> that he knows or something. So it's kind of evolved since then, but um, but it's just a fun little thing. He loves the solar system enough that I decided to just keep it. I might end up switching it to something else, you know, once his interest changes a little bit, but, um, we like it so far and he loves his little, his little student planner book. <laughs> and then the next thing we have here is classical conversations. We are part of a classical conversations community and we use this as our spine for like science and history. And different things like that um, I will show you we are on cycle one this year and cycle one covers let's see well all of the cycles cover this they cover math Latin science English timeline history geography and then every week we do science projects and uh, or sorry, sorry science experiments and then we do art projects every week in community day and this has 24 weeks in total. And this year we are learning about um, ancient civilizations in history and about uh, kingdom and, kingdoms and classifications in science and biomes and kind of just all of that. Um, kind of life on earth and how it all works and how God created it to um, all work together. So we are doing CC for that. All right, guys, well, that was it. That is all of our curriculum for first grade for this coming school year. I hope that it was helpful for you to see inside all of these books and to kind of get a, a feel for what um, this would look like if you decided to choose this curriculum. If you decide not to choose this curriculum, that's completely okay too. I, I just love being able to show you, you know, what everything is because I know for me, YouTube videos or where I go if I want to see inside of any book, right? <laughs>
Don't forget to check out the link for Reading Eggs down below in my description box for a free month trial. You won't regret it. It has helped our homeschool so much and I know that it would be a blessing for you guys too. So thank you Reading Eggs for partnering with me to um, share, with, share all of that with you guys. And if you are interested in seeing my second grade video and my kindergarten video curriculum picks, um, I will leave the playlist down below so you can go and check all of that out. My next one is going to be my preschooler. Um, so make sure to turn on those notifications so that way you can know whenever that comes out. All right, you guys, well, if you like this video, give me a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe and click the little bell icon so you get notified when the new videos come out. And let's be friends. Follow me over on Instagram at Dina underscore pursuing peace. All right, you guys, well, I hope you're having a blessed day and I will see you next time with another video. Bye-bye. For the 2020, 2020, 20, I'm never gonna be able to say this right the first time. Finishes level one. For who? For you. <laughs> 21, 20, what is it? 20, for the 21, 22 school year. Hmm.